lot of discussions around the PlayStation 5's first half that whilst its heavy hitters do indeed hit heavy, there haven't been enough of them. And yet whilst this should mean that gamers flock to less obvious titles where giant first party new IP might usually be, there's been many games in the last four years that have come and gone with very little fanfare, despite being worth your time. I'm Sai, this is WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 best PS5 games you're not playing. Number 10, Rise of the Ronin. It's easy to understand why Team Ninja's Rise of the Ronin got lost in the shuffle, since it's hard to keep track of all the historical Asian open world titles that have come out recently. In fact, the developers themselves released a similar hack and slash Wulong Fallen Dynasty only the previous year. With that said, Rise of the Ronin boasts some of the most satisfying combat seen in a Team Ninja product, which is impressive considering their track record. Each of the spears, sabers and katanas have between 3 to 8 combat styles, giving our hero incredible versatility in battle. There's also a heavy emphasis on firearms, allowing you to blast mercenaries with rifles, handguns and bayonets. But combat isn't the only thing on offer. Rise of the Ronin contains luscious cities to explore, enthralling missions that allow three-player co-op, and fun travelling methods including horse riding, gliding and grappling, which can also double as a long-distance weapon. It's also worth mentioning that who you ally with or fight against directly affects how the story plays out. Not only does this make each decision more impactful, it encourages multiple playthroughs to experience the narrative fully. So that said, Rise of the Ronin is one PlayStation 5 game that you probably haven't played once, but you probably should play multiple times. Number 9, Pacific Drive. To heighten tension, horror movies often include a scene where a character can't start the car while trying to escape from an imposing figure. And in 2024, Ironwood Studios decided to turn a trope into a whole game. Although Pacific Drive deals with interdimensional threats and wormholes, the true horror lies in car maintenance. <laughs> Set in a distorted reality version of the Midwest, the protagonist realises his only means of survival is by relying on his station wagon. As such, it's imperative that you keep your vehicle in tip-top shape. On paper, having auto repair play a big role in a survival title could kill the momentum. However, the customization and repair aspects gel well with the gameplay. After all, the main reason you're driving is to scour parts to upgrade your car, and after dealing with acid rain, ghosts and sentient mannequins, it's rewarding when you finally get the chance to, as Exhibit would say, pimp your ride. Pacific Drive also utilises an effective way to maintain tension. The yellow objective rings on the map gradually decrease in size, indicating how much time you have left. Since the rings are constantly shrinking, it feels like you've completed each task by the skin of your teeth, even when there's plenty of time to spare. Number 8, Nobody Wants to Die. The marketing behind Nobody Wants to Die was practically non-existent, almost like critical hit games were distancing themselves from a guaranteed bomb. Despite the minimal buzz, the cyberpunk noir title received favourable reviews across the board. And yet Nobody Wants to Die still remains mostly unknown. At the moment, it doesn't even have a Wikipedia page, for example. Even though walking simulators aren't for everybody, this title should win over the biggest sceptics. The characterisation, the actor's chemistry and the sharp writing make every interaction utterly riveting. Although the purpose of the time manipulation mechanic is to work out the chronology of crimes, players will want to mess around with it just to admire the timey-wimey effects. The aesthetic, which amalgamates elements from Bioshock to Blade Runner, is so gorgeous, players will want to wander around to bask in its beauty. And the lingering mystery of its detective tale is also deeply intriguing to the point where it's tempting to play through the whole thing in just one sitting. Sure, the main campaign may be brief since it's over and done with in five to six hours, however there's a push to play Nobody Wants to Die a few times, not just to unlock various endings, but to explore everything that it has to offer. Number 7, Inscription. Since D&D deck builders are pretty niche, many players would assume Inscription wouldn't be for them. But when the gameplay starts blending in vlogs, tabletop RPGs, board games, puzzles, turn-based strategy and roguelike elements, it's clear that this isn't just a game, but a one-of-a-kind hodgepodge experiment. Despite the fact these elements enhance the experience, Inscription is a card-based title at its core. Even though luck plays a big role, you don't stand a chance unless you've devised a viable strategy, which makes it all the more gratifying when you emerge victorious in battle. Losing repeatedly isn't as tedious as it should be though since you feel like you're improving in every match as you become more accustomed to the subtler mechanics. 
And just when it feels like you have everything figured out, Inscription throws in another off-kilter idea like an escape room or a found footage horror scenario just to keep things fresh. Due to the excessive ideas, Inscription should have collapsed under its own ambition. Instead, the developers devised one of the most original experiences on the PS5. It's difficult for footage to encapsulate the staggering creativity lying within this underrated title, even if players feel like it's not their cup of tea. Everybody should give Inscription a go just to find out for sure. Number 6, Evil West. Gaming developers are always striving to devise mind-blowing mechanics and innovative ideas. However, Flying Wild Hog went in a different direction while putting together their third-person shooter, Evil West. The supernatural western can be summarised in three words, Gunslinger vs Vampires. Sign me up. Even though blasting bloodsuckers throughout the 10 hour campaign should get boring, Evil West gets away with it due to its kinetic combat, splatterfest of violence and gross out finishes which are reminiscent of Doom's glory kills. Although the levels are well crafted and there's plenty to explore, you'll be inclined to stop and wail on everything that has the misfortune of crossing your path. The combat becomes enthralling as you progress since you can unlock all sorts of over the top weapons and upgrades. Admittedly, the formula doesn't really deviate from this but players won't care because they'll be too busy ripping and tearing until it's done. Evil West doesn't pretend to be anything other than what it is, and to that end, if anyone is looking for a straightforward shooter, then Evil West has got you covered. Number 5, Kenner Bridge of Spirits. Whether or not Kenner is a Souls-like is a discussion for the comments if you've played it, but if you haven't then a large reason why could be the number of Souls-like games all fighting for space in the adventure genre. That is to say it's criminal how little attention Kenner Bridge of Spirits received. Despite the fact that this was Ember Lab's first game and put together by 15 or so core employees, Kenner is a total knockout. There are times when it feels like a movie due to the Pixar level animation and focus on characterization. The puzzles are so well structured they never feel unfair despite being challenging. And though there are a lot of skills to wrap your head around, it's clear how to utilise each one effectively. And it's also cool how certain abilities have multiple purposes, like how the spirit bombs can stun enemies or create extra platforms. Bosses provide a hefty challenge but it never feels unreasonable, see Soulsborns, due to the tight combat. Rather than simply bashing enemies, you need to rely on a mix of targeted assaults, slow motion strikes and melee brawling. Although Kenner is available on multiple systems, the PlayStation 5 port stands out due to the almost non-existent loading times and consistent frame rates. The DualSense has also been integrated into the gameplay flawlessly, with the game still being touted as one of the better adapters to the controller's haptic feedback four or something years later. Number 4, Marvel's Midnight Suns. Marvel's The Avengers may have been a disaster, but there were high hopes for Marvel's Midnight Suns since the promotions indicated the tactical RPG would put a darker spin on the normally light-hearted property. But the moment Midnight Suns was revealed to be a deck-building game, the preemptive hype kind of shriveled away. Coupled with an imperfect release window and a poor launch on PC, it was no surprise when this superhero title became a commercial flop. Midnight Suns may not have turned out the way it was initially advertised, but the point is it's still solid. Solid. Even though deck based titles can be slow, Midnight Suns' combat is vibrant thanks to the dynamic and distinctive card system. Saying the wrong thing to your squad or misusing a card can affect each superhero's ability to fight competently. The fact you have to constantly monitor your teammates to work as a cohesive unit makes every encounter feel personal. Midnight Suns might be entrenched in Marvel lore, but it still manages to craft a unique story that hasn't been done to death, which should satisfy long term comic fans. And with the diverse customization options, superb voice acting and sharp banter, well what's not to love? Number 3, Fist Forged in Shadow Torch Fist launched on the PS4 and PS5 back in 2021 and though the last gen port was riddled with technical problems, the PlayStation 5 version is a must have. Despite being labelled as a Metroidvania, Fist has elements of run and gun titles like Gunstar Heroes and Contra. Actually this side scroller captures the essence of 90s bullet hell shooters better than the recent Contra remake. And despite Metroidvania games often being bogged down in backtracking and vague directions, Fist actually avoids these pitfalls. Thanks to the fast travel system and detailed map, getting lost is a rare occurrence. Even though the next destination isn't always laid out, this works in the game's favour since it compels you to explore, allowing you to locate all sorts of secrets. Sure, of course you have to revisit certain areas, but it doesn't feel repetitive once you've obtained some upgrades since you'll find different ways to navigate through each terrain. Also, it's rewarding to return to old places and wipe the floor with enemies you had trouble with in the past with significantly more upgraded weaponry. People often talk about memorable 7 out of 10 titles from earlier generations, well Fist is the kind of 
of game that deserves to be played now and remembered just as fondly in years to come. Number 2 Final Fantasy VII Rebirth Now this might seem like it doesn't necessarily belong on this list, after all Square's prized IP harbours so much power in the gaming industry, even weak instalments like Final Fantasy XIII bring in the big bucks. And since Final Fantasy VII is the franchise's flagship, FF7 Rebirth should have made a mint. However the hyped entry opened with less sales than Final Fantasy VII Remake or Final Fantasy XVI. Unlike its predecessor Cloud and his allies finally get to explore the vast lands outside of Midgar there's plenty of new content compared to Remake, this is very much a string of the more memorable moments of the original FF7. The combat, which was already on top form before, has been refined with sharp and accessible mechanics. The quests are remarkably varied, ranging from tear-jerking to hilarious, epic to downright zany. See the bald bar in Junon. Zany zany zany. Whilst the game's world map is bloated in a way that would make some Ubisoft games blush, the core experience of, well, experiencing the 1997 story and all of its locations characters and beats on the power of the PlayStation 5 is still wonderful and the level of production is just insane. Considering that the masses have been clamouring for a modern remake of Final Fantasy VII for literal decades, it's frankly shocking that Rebirth isn't flying off the shelves. And number one, Resident Evil 4 VR probably also doesn't seem like it belongs. After all, Capcom recently announced that Resident Evil 4 Remake hit 8 million sales, making it one of the best-selling games in the long-running franchise. This is definitely helped by the game being on most major platforms, however, the PlayStation 5 version has additional boons that the others don't, some that even most PS5 owners haven't taken advantage of, and that's the exclusive PSVR 2 upgrade. Yes, you can finally play the I can't believe they remade a masterpiece and it actually lived up to its potential Resident Evil Evil 4 Remake in VR and do so for free, meaning that the PS5 version is the superior release of the lot. Rather than just slapping VR tech onto the game, Capcom took careful steps to create an immersive title that's accessible and adjustable. Even though you can pull out your weapons and herbs with applicable hand gestures, sticking with traditional controls is also an option if you can't get a hang of the VR setup. Although Full Motion offers the full Rambo John Wick VR experience, Comfort Mode accommodates players with motion sickness, allowing Leon to teleport around so the shaky movement is minimised. This is a very good thing. However, with the PSVR 2 hardly setting the world on fire, it's a surefire thing that most folks aren't getting everything they could out of Resident Evil 4 Remake. It's a real shame that even if you were one of the 8 million people who did buy RE4R because of the prohibitive price of the PSVR 2 and the general sentiment around it, that one of the best Resident Evil experiences remains something that very few have undertaken.